red myrtles are beautiful uh, summer blooming trees and they have been relatively pest free before the arrival of the cream myrtle bark scale. And cream myrtle bark scale is a relatively new uh, pest on cream myrtles. And here at Hammer Research Station, we have uh, more than 100 beautiful varieties of cream myrtles and they all get the bark scale. Over the past several years, there has been a regional team effort uh, managing this bark scale, and this include uh, LSU Ag Center, uh, and also uh, University of Florida, uh, Auburn University, University of Arkansas, and several USDA labs. At LSU Ag Center, we have been working on quick myrtle bark scale crawler monitoring, biopesticide management, and also uh, the transfer of some of the neonicotinoid type of products from uh, the application to, into pollen. For managing the bark scale uh, with uh, some of the insecticide, uh, we have been conducting a lot of field trials and one group that has been uh, very effective is the neonicotinoid. Within this group, uh, there are two active ingredients. The first one is imidacloprid as products uh, as mallet and also as um, merit. And this product um, are more uh, available to uh, homeowners, uh, also uh, landscape professionals. Another active ingredient in the same a chemical group is uh, denotephron, uh, for example, the xylem uh, liquid systemic insecticide uh, that is more available to, uh, to professionals. And this group of, uh, of uh, pesticide, you need to pay attention to the label because they do have uh, a bee box on the label. When the trees are in bloom, you're not supposed to use them as a foliar application. And you can use them as a foliar uh, application and get a quick uh, effect uh, earlier in the season. Uh, more often, they are used as soil drench or injection and can last a little bit longer, at least three to four months. And two consecutive treatments uh, over two seasons may give you a contrary effects for over two years. So these are long lasting products if they're used as, as soil um, applications. So one concern with this group is uh, whether or not they're going to be transferred into pollen because Cream myrtles can provide three months of blooms, and the pollen on cream myrtles is an important uh, food source for bees. So we conducted an uh, experiment to look into pollen translocation from soil applied imidacloprid and denotephron into pollen, and it shows that uh, when you apply the both of the material, when you apply them in the fall, uh, extremely high concentration will be transferred into pollen uh, in the next June to August uh, blooming season versus when you apply them in the spring. So if you're going to use this, we do not recommend them to use them in the fall or use them as a preventive measure. Rather, we recommend them uh, to be used uh, in the early spring before the, uh, the tree blooms. You can even use them when the tree are in blooms. However, there is this um, uh, big benefit when you use them earlier in the season, especially when you apply them in April, because the crawlers, the young generation, the young life stage of cream myrtle bark scale will come out in late April and early May. We did uh, extensive monitoring of crawlers using double-sided sticky tape, wrap them uh, on the trees and collect them once a week. And with this monitoring technology, uh, we were able to have uh, the peak of the crawlers uh, marked on the on the graph and for us uh, for uh, Louisiana our peak season is really early May so that's the time if you want to use some of the other uh, not uh, systemic but rather uh, contact material for example the fulcrum Farcom is uh, periproxifen, is uh, the active ingredient is uh, periproxifen and is an uh, insect growth regulator. So it works by contact, but it's relatively safe for the bees, for the pollinators, and also for uh, the lady beetles, a very important group of natural enemies that will prey on the crape myrtle bark scale. And there are other um, 
inside growth regulators you can choose from, such as other directing, and there are so many different products labeled uh, under these uh, two active ingredients. These need to be applied before the foliage uh, is, uh, uh, before the plants bud out. It's just because it's easier for you to apply them on the trunk and on the stems uh, when the foliage is not there yet. Another type of uh, product is uh, oil or soap. Ultrafine oil or soap, when you use them on the trees with the crawlers coming out, they may give you a suppression effect. However, this is not very effective long term wise. This is a contact material and may provide short term suppression. So other than these products we already mentioned, there are also other contact materials that may provide some knockdown control, such as bifenthering. However, you have to be careful because some of these materials are very detrimental to natural enemies. We have seen a uh, queen myrtle bar bark scale being fed by uh, natural enemies such as uh, lady beetles and lace winds. So we believe these uh, are the long term control with the bark scale once you brought the the population down. So conserving natural enemies is very important.